those that have asked for prayer requests today, just right there in your seat, though all of you that have asked for special requests, I can't remember them. Some of you have heard the request. That means that please keep it in your mind and pray during the week about these requests. Uh, if, if God has ex, ex, uh, impressed upon your mind one of the requests today, that means he wants you to pray about that request during the week. We don't only want to pray here. The reason why we share it in common is so that we can all pray during the week and keep these issues in prayer that we know that our brothers and sisters are struggling and going through problems and we need to pray for one another. Constantly pray for one another. The Bible leads us into that. Care for one another. Pray for one another. The Bible uses that one another constantly. Uh, and that we are not an island all to ourselves. We belong to a body. And whatever affects, whatever hurts, if, if your little pinky hurts, it affects your whole body. And, and the body of Christ, we are one body and we need to pray for each other. So those of you that have asked for requests today, I would like for you to, to stand up as I, as I pray uh, for these requests here uh, today. Please stand. Those of you who have asked for, for requests as I, as I pray today. Dear Heavenly Father, we are here before your presence knowing that you love us, knowing that you are the all-powerful God, knowing that nothing, no occurrence in this world surprises you. That whatever people are going through right now, you knew about it before it even happened. And therefore, Lord, we know that you have a plan. Help everyone that is struggling, that is going through a problem in their life, that they may turn to you. Instead of turning inward, they may put their eyes up towards you. And no matter whatever problem they're going through, that they, that they would know that you know that they were going to go through this and that you have a plan. Help them, Lord, to, to run to you, to not run away from you. That in the moments of difficulties, in the moments of trials, that we don't hide, but that we look for you, knowing that you love us. So if someone, because of the trials and tribulations that they're going through, have sort of drawn away from you, I ask you, Lord, today to bring them close to you. That they may have the strength that even in the middle of sickness, in the middle of pain, in the middle of difficulties, in the middle of financial problems, in the middle of marital problems, no matter what they're going through, that they will run to you and seeing you as their only solution. Help them, Lord, to open their eyes to see what you're trying to teach them through this trial and tribulation of how you want them to grow. Open their eyes, open their minds, open their ears to our Lord, to be able to see you, to be able to experience you, to be able to hear you in the moment of trial and tribulation. I ask you, Lord, for every request that has been put here today. You know which ones they are. They are standing up. You know the names of the people that are hurting, that are people have cancer, the trucker who has an accident, has had an accident, the person who's in ICU, uh, uh, those that are struggling with their families, Lord. <clears throat> I ask, Lord, that you may help them and that they may feel your presence in their lives and the people they have asked for, that right now, wherever they are, the man in ICU, the person in the hospital, in different places, those that they have prayed for them, that they may feel your presence in their life right now, Lord. That your Holy Spirit may put your hand, his hands upon them. That your Holy Spirit may impress them to worship you no matter what, what condition they're in, Lord. Lord, we ask you for this program here today. We dedicate it to you. We dedicate it to the preaching of your gospel. We dedicate it, Lord, to the empowerment of the Holy Spirit over people here today. We, Lord, depend on you. This is not us doing it. Use every person in the band. Use every person who lifts up their voice and singing. Lifts, use every message. Lose, use those that are taking parts, Lord, 
to try to make this as real as possible so that we may experience you as much as possible here today. Lord, may your holy angels fill this place. I know there isn't much space, but that they may fill this place. That your Holy Spirit may indwell every worshiper here today. May your Holy Spirit speak to them. Lord, may your Holy Spirit lead every, every person who is singing here and participating, even those that are dealing with audio and visual back there, Lord. Bless them and give them wisdom. And Lord, may we really feel your presence in this place. May we experience you here today. Show yourself, God. Show yourself to your people here today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God's people groaned and cried for help. A cry for restoration, redemption, and peace on earth. They believed God had forgotten them. 400 years of silence from him. 400 years of humanity driving itself further and further into the depth of the darkness. With each passing generation, the hope of a Messiah who would bring them salvation grew smaller and smaller. Lost souls with no hope cried to the heavens for a savior who would bring mercy and justice on earth. But God hadn't forgotten his people. God heard the cries of his children. What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap this sleeping? Who Angels greet with anthems sweet While shepherds watch our keeping Behold, an angelic light like a morning star Shone bright for all to see The glory of the Lord shone around the heavenly hosts The angel of the Lord declaring Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh. Come, peasant king, to own him, the king of kings, salvation brings, let loving hearts enthrone him. Could it be him, the answer to our anguish and cries for help? The one that we prayed for until our sweat became drops of blood falling to the ground. For it is him, our redeemer, king of kings, wonderful counselor, mighty God, the lamb who would fulfill God's covenant, the one who will be called Emmanuel.
put our trust in your name, Jesus. Able to save and deliver us. We put our hope in your name, Jesus. Ah! Uh-huh.
Greetings. You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. How is it that God has chosen me for his glory, that I will be the one to bear this child who was God, is God, and will be God forevermore? Could it be that the child within this mere handmaiden's womb will be the consolation for his people? The angel of the Lord says that I am highly favored, that I am blessed, and that the Lord is with me, that I carry the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, who will overcome. I believe that he who is mighty hath done great things and holy is his name. I believe that I carry in my womb the ultimate seed of promise, and he will be born to fulfill the covenant he made with Abraham. He is coming to fulfill every promise he made to mankind. My baby boy will walk on water, calm the seas and heal the broken hearts of his people. When I kiss the face of my baby boy, I will be kissing the face of God. This child was not put in my womb to only bring us salvation and peace, but to be our salvation and peace to the ends of the earth.
For on this day, the light of hope of salvation in the midst of darkness would be born from Mary's blessed womb. The Redeemer had to enter this world through pain, and he also had to leave the world through pain. Mary, who was filled with his grace and the Holy Spirit, felt the labor pains one by one. With each pain rolling in like a wave, the time for our Messiah to be born as flesh and blood comes closer and closer. Mary's groans grow louder, but she knows God is with her, for he is the all-powerful, immutable God, and she carries his own son. A majestic peace suddenly fills her, and there is a change in the atmosphere.
Heaven is on the move. Can you feel it? Here comes the glory of the Lord. His presence is sweeping in. Heaven is here. His kingdom is here to reign in the hearts of his people forever and ever. For the king of kings is born in a lonely manger. You are standing on holy ground.
the Lord. Can you feel him? Here comes the glory of the Lord sweeping in in the room. Yeah. We feel your presence, Jesus. Oh, here comes the glory of the Lord. We honor you, Jesus. Here comes the glory of the Lord sweeping in this room. For the Lord of hosts has fulfilled his promise. He has shaken the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the dry land. The nations have been filled with his glory. The angels shake the heavens with their praise, singing glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. The earth is shaken with the awakening of the people by God the true reformer, the true rectifier of all nations is born to heal the broken. He is a wonder for he is all powerful, almighty and all knowing. The lamb of God is here to atone and redeem his children with his blood, to clothe us with his love, peace and mercy. You are Lord and we exalt you. Here comes the glory. 